In this video, we will show you how to interact with SharePoint Online using a SharePoint Online connection and the object variable from a Nintex Workflow Cloud workflow. In this scenario, we will notify new car buyers that their new car has arrived and where they can pick it up from. The SharePoint Online list contains the car dealer's name, the buyer's email address, the type of car purchased, and if they have been notified or not. The Nintex Workflow Cloud workflow will query the list and send an email to those that have not been notified and then update the list to advise they have now been notified. We start by adding the SharePoint Online query list action to the workflow. Add a pre-configured SharePoint Online connection and add the URL to the site that we will be working with. Clicking the Retrieve Lists button populates the available lists and libraries in the list name dropdown. We will be using our orders list. We only want to interact with items where the notified column in the SharePoint online list is no. To do this, we set a condition by clicking the Add Conditions button. The basic syntax of the condition is where column name, operator, value. As we have selected our list, the Where dropdown box populates with the available columns from the list. In this scenario, we only want items where the notified column is no. I am now going to sort the output by item ID ascending. In this scenario, the sort order is not that important, but it does need to be configured or else the action will be marked as unconfigured. For the output, we create an object variable. You can see that the object will contain the number of items that are being returned. This is handy when using such actions as loop n times, as you will know how many times you need to loop through the returned object. You will get a collection of the item IDs so that you can work with specific items in the SharePoint online list. The items collection will contain data for each of the columns in the list. Some columns, such as person or group, will have multiple entries so that you can retrieve the data in the format that you need, such as display name, email address, or username. Lastly, an object is returned called first item, which only has data for the first item that was retrieved. This means you can work directly with this item in the workflow without having to loop through a collection. Next, I am going to add a loop for each action, which will go through the items collection and process each item as we require, which is to notify each buyer that their car is ready and where they can pick it up. Notice in the workflow variables, we now have a loop for each section, which has variables for each item in the collection. This allows us to work with each item individually. Let's now add a send an email action to the loop. For the recipient email addresses, we will use the buyer email variable. The subject field is then completed. And now for the body of the email. We will address the email using the buyer variable again, but this time we will use the display name. Next, we will advise what car they have purchased using the car variable and where they can pick it up using the title variable. To finish the loop, I will update the notified column of the current item to yes, so that the next time the workflow runs, this item will not be picked up by the initial query. I'll add an update items share point online action. Configure the SharePoint online connection, site URL, and list as before. I'll add the field notified. Notice how only the columns that can be updated are available for selection. When configuring a selected column, you will only be able to enter a value based on the data type of the column being updated. In this case, we're updating a yes, no column, so only yes or no is available as a value option. The default values can be overridden with a variable, but that variable would still need to be a yes, no, or Boolean data type. Next, I will set a condition so that only the current item is updated. This is done by configuring the condition to update the item on the list where the column ID is equal to the current item ID. 
I could have updated the notified column for every item with one action at the end of the workflow, but you risk updating an item that was submitted while the workflow was running. In this video, we learn how to use the object that is returned when using a SharePoint online query list action. Objects make it easier to work with a large amount of data that can be returned from a single query. 